This is a tutorial explaining how the ghosts move in the game of Ms. Pac-Man. And before I start, I want to point out that this is going to be a beginner's guide. It's going to cover the basics and give an overview. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, you can find details on these things elsewhere. just want to keep it simple. So with that in mind, uh, let's take a look. As we all know, the game of Pac-Man has four ghosts. At any given time, each of these four ghosts is pursuing a target. Now, the key thing to understand is that they're each coming up with the target that they're choosing to pursue in slightly different ways. So with that in mind, I want to take a look at this situation here, and we're going to begin with the red ghost. Now, the red ghost is the one that is often the most feared by beginners, but it is unquestionably the easiest one of the four to understand. Its target is always the same, and it is you. It is Ms. Pac-Man. Now notice I put a red square on the Ms. Pac-Man. That's gone. That was there. That red square represents the target that the red ghost is pursuing. Now, probably doesn't seem like I told you anything all that profound. Yeah, big deal. The red ghost is coming after you. Okay, we all know that. That is true. But in this current situation, it would be good to know maybe whether or not the red ghost is going to continue going to the left or head downward. So how do we know that? How do we know which way the red ghost is going to go? Well, the way it works is this, and this works for all the ghosts the same. Imagine a rectangle with the ghost at one corner and the target at the opposite corner. And you'll notice that in this case, the vertical sides of the rectangle are longer than the horizontal side. This is important because the ghost is always going to choose to take the path that is longer. In other words, it is always going to shorten the longer of the horizontal and the vertical. So because the vertical is the longer distance in this case, we know that the red ghost is going to choose to head downward here. Let me show that with this path. There he is. He's heading downward. Now notice that uh, the ghost, you know, if everything were to stay stationary here, that the red ghost makes the decision to head left once it gets down to the uh, right, right near the box. This is because that's the point where uh, the horizontal distance is the longer of the two distances. At that point, the horizontal is longer than the vertical, and so the red ghost makes the decision to go left there instead of continuing straight down. Now, I imagine that somebody out there is thinking, okay, well, what do I do if the, the horizontal and vertical distances are the same? In other words, what if, what if it's a square, not a rectangle? And that's a very good question, and the answer to that question actually um, is... I'm not going to say it's complicated, but I think it does go a little bit beyond what I want to cover here. So I am going to say, uh, to punt on that one, I'm going to say check the link at the bottom uh, of the notes where you can find more detail on that. Okay, so that's the red ghost. What about the pink ghost? How does the pink ghost decide to move? Well, the pink ghost is a lot like the red ghost, only instead of aiming for Ms. Pacman, it aims somewhere else. Pink Ghost aims for a spot approximately four dots in front of whichever direction Ms. Pac-Man is facing. So in this case, Pink Ghost will be aiming right there. It's aiming in front of me. Now this can be particularly interesting when I get to a spot like, say, here, where one might think that the Pink Ghost's best movement, its best action, would be to come up and eat me, but it's not going to. Instead, it's going to aim to the spot roughly where the cherry is. And it's for reasons like this that the pink ghost has to be considered probably the easiest one to deal with. Uh, so the pink ghost goes whichever way you are facing, but with one caveat. So let me explain that to you now. Notice right now I'm facing to the right. So if the pink ghost were, if you were to draw the pink ghost target on the maze, it would be directly to the right. If I were to face downwards, the pink ghost target would be directly underneath me. And to the left, it would be directly to the left. So you might think that if I were facing upwards, that it would go to a spot directly above me, four dots above me. You would think that, but you would be incorrect. It turns out that whenever Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, is facing upwards, the pink ghost doesn't aim for a spot directly in front of you. It aims for a spot up and to the left. Now, this is due to a bug in the code 
and I'm including a link uh, to Don Hodges' site where he explains how they how that bug came about if you're interested in it. But this is definitely a little bit weird and, and it does throw people off. So keep in mind, the pink ghost aims for a spot in front of you unless you're facing upward, in which case it aims for a spot up and to the left. And this can make for some very interesting uh, moments uh, when you're trying to keep them in a group. Anytime you go up with a group of ghosts, you, you run the risk of losing Pinky because of his tendency to head to the left and not stay behind you. Okay, so we've covered the red ghost, we've covered the pink ghost. The fun now comes when we try to figure out what in the world is going on with the green ghost. The green ghost is far and away the most difficult to understand. Far and away. Um, and uh, it, in fact, it's almost impossible to figure out what the green ghost is going to do in real time. I'm going to show you what the green ghost target is and explain to you how it works. Here's the bad news. You're probably not going to be able to process this in real time. But here we go. The green ghost target is off the maze. It's actually down in that lower right corner. Let's see if I can get a spot where you can actually see where the target is. Okay. So, how in the world does the green ghost end up in a spot way down there? Well, it has to do with two factors. First is the location of the red ghost, and the second is a spot about two dots ahead of which way you are facing. What happens is, is a line is drawn from wherever the red ghost is through that spot directly in front of you, and then it proceeds for an equal distance past that spot, and that's the target that the green ghost is going for. Its path would be something like this. Like I said, this is probably too different, too difficult to process in real time. Just to give you an idea of how hard it is, I'm going to go ahead and leave the target on the maze as I go. I mean, it's all over the place. There's almost no way to know what is going on. That's the bad news. Now, here's the good news. The good news is that the randomness associated with the green ghost can be contained if the red ghost and the, and the green ghost are very close to one another. So note the situation I have here. I have the red ghost on top of the green ghost. If we look at their targets, the green ghost's target is way down there, the red ghost target is me. The targets are very, very different. But the paths that they take are actually very similar. In fact, they're identical. You'll see that the paths that the green ghost and the red ghost take at any given time are virtually identical. The, you know, maybe the green ghost has a different target, but between the ghosts and Ms. Pac-Man, you'll see that they actually coalesce. They're the same. So as a result, here's the bit of advice with the green ghost. The, green, the bit of advice is this. Keep the green ghost and the red ghost close together and you'll never have trouble, or most of the time you'll have trouble. Separate them, though. And you'll find that life doesn't always go the way you want. I'm trying to actually separate them now. It's not easy to do. Ah, there we go. In this scenario, where they're not together, you'll find that uh, well, they are together. Okay, I'm trying to ungroup them, and I can't. Isn't that funny? Um, anyways, as long as the red ghost and green ghost are together, their paths are going to be virtually identical. So you should strive to keep them together. If they are not together, you should be prepared to deal with the green ghost, you, you should have your reflexes ready. You should be on your toes because the green ghost could go anywhere at any time and it's very, very difficult to predict. Um, you do get a feel for it after playing the game for a while, but it does take time. So with that in mind, we have one ghost left and that is the orange ghost. I'm going to make Ms. Pac-Man invincible for this one. And let me set up to show you a little bit more about the orange ghost. Um, here's how I want to do this. Okay. Oh, boy, I'm not getting where I want. Okay, so look at where Ms. Pac-Man is. Ms. Pac-Man is pretty far away from the green ghost, or excuse me, the orange ghost. So I'm going to draw a little circle to demonstrate this. When the orange ghost is outside this circle, which has a radius of about eight dots, his target is Ms. Pac-Man. In other words, the orange ghost behaves exactly like the red ghost, when it is far away. So if you look at this, he's going to come and attempt to pursue me. Now, where it gets a little strange with this ghost, it's when he gets in the circle. At this point, 
you'll notice that the orange box no longer is on Ms. Pac-Man. It disappeared. And the uh, orange goes to path. Now, now he wants to go run away. What is that all about? Well, it turns out, if you look down in the lower left corner, there's the orange target. In other words, whenever the orange ghost gets close to Ms. Pac-Man, he makes a run for the lower left corner. When he is far away from you, he's trying to catch you. Okay. So I'm going to park the ghost so you can see this. Right now his path is coming to get me. Here, his path is run away. Now it's coming to get me. Now it's run away. So the orange ghost can be very strange and, and maddening to deal with because even though he's never, he very rarely actually can reach you, um, the fact of the matter is that he always seems to be doing his own three thing, which makes him hard to control. Unless you are between the orange ghost and the lower left energizer, he's going to be running away from you anytime he gets close to you. So that can make him a difficult one to keep in a group. And we'll talk more about that in another tutorial. But anyhow, that's how the orange ghost thinks. So uh, that covers it. That should do it. And I wish you the best of luck. You know, this information may not be useful to you right away, but I promise you that the more you play, the more that you're going to start to notice the ghost behavior and the more you're going to be able to deal with it. So I recommend that you now go off, play the game a little bit, and then come back and watch this tutorial in about a week after you've played a bit. Then go away, play some more, come back and watch this tutorial in about a month. Come back and watch this tutorial periodically. And uh, what you're going to find is that it's going to make more and more sense each time you come back. So good luck to you. I hope that this is helpful.